Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have a YouTube video today that is not really a tutorial, but it's just to show you what I do to make little books that will be for sale in my Etsy store. I do have some already, like 10 or 12 of them, that are finished and I forgot to take pictures and post them. So I'm just going to go through and kind of show you, let's see, this is one that I'm working on currently right now out of the doodles that I did that you saw, uh, guess on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, my account is private, but it's under Vicki Brown. So, and there's a picture of, oh wait, let me see. I can't remember. Is it a picture of my dog? For Pete's sake, Vicki. Yes, it's a picture of my old English bulldog as a puppy because I know there's lots of Vicky Browns in the world, so that's how you can distinguish me from somebody else. Like I said, my um, account is private because I get a lot of weird men wanting to be my friend, and I'm not up for that. <laughs> so um, I don't need friends like that. Anyway, so this is what I've done. is I had a bunch of, and I mean a bunch, of different types of, that's paper, of uh, boards that I salvaged from something else. And so I took a photo, I took a photograph that I scanned of a page out of one of my doodle books and I cut off like, you know, parts that were undesirable, parts that were Oh, this is a good one. Parts that were a little dark on the edge here, or they were fuzzy because it was mashed onto a scanner from a book. And um, then I took, beep, 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 beep. then I, I took the paper and I covered uh, two pieces of chipboard these out of the way. Two pieces of chipboard and I tried to match the background color of the print which is kind of a pinky brown color with some leftover tan cardstock that I had. Um, I wasn't sure if that was desirable to other people but for me it was it was a better match than the pink or yellow or blue, so on and so forth. So here are my, my two covers, my front and my back. I had some paper that was in a drawer, the watercolor, not watercolor, uh, what did I label it? Some kind of other dyed paper drawer. And they were already in a clip, they already had a clip on them. So what I did was I looked at the clip, I took the clip off and I looked at the papers, I trimmed them up. They were different colors. Do you believe this? No one ever calls till I start a YouTube video, I swear. It was a spam call, of course. Um, so I took the papers, and I think I have two pieces, is it two? Yeah, I have two pieces in each one, but I think I'm going to increase that. And I saw an idea how to um, make the ends more colorful when you do a Coptic stitch book and to give the Coptic stitch book a little lift was to take some kind of paper and just make a very small little, um, I don't know what they call it, it's just a little extra folded piece of paper on every signature. And then, now these are not colorful granite, but you get what I mean. So I put them in here. And then when you look at the end of the book, it's going to look the same as this. Now you could do um, black and white here and then you could do colors or whatever you want along the spine. I just had some of this left over and it was an experiment. So I decided to leave it as the same print that's the book is made out of. So I'm thinking about putting about four sheets, four pieces of folded paper in each one of these instead of two. So I'm going to go to the drawer. I think 
yeah, I'm going to go to the drawer and pick out some kind of muted colored papers and add them to what I've already done so that the book is not too skinny. If I'm going to Coptic stitch and drill holes through all of these or poke holes through these, I want it to be worth the effort. On the other hand, I don't want the Coptic books that I sell in my Etsy store to be overly expensive. They're not perfect, they're handmade. And I sell them to people who want to play with them, get them wet, messy, glue, you know, whatever. So I don't want to charge an arm and a leg and I'm trying my best not to because I do free shipping. And Etsy's policy is now, if something costs, I think it's $10 or more, I have to, I, I have to do tracking on it, which is another $2 on top of eating the shipping charge. So what I make on these little books is, uh, doesn't accumulate very quickly, let's put it that way. I'm not going to need a 1099 form this year for taxes. So um, it just, it's just something fun that I use with a few leftover things. Um, and so this video will be about what I do to make some new books. It won't be about this book in partic particularly. It will be about several other books. So... On we go. Most of it will be fast forwarded and I will try to do um, a voiceover. My husband's not home right now and the dogs are asleep. So I actually get to film the first part of the video here instead of a voiceover. So the next parts will be voiceovers. And let's go. Okay, everybody, I'm testing a new headphone and microphone. So if I sound like I'm in a barrel, let me know. I'm trying to improve voiceovers. All right, so this is a piece of regular computer paper that I took a little cylindrical tube, stamp, uh, stamped it in, I think I did it in latex paint, and then stamped on a piece of white paper, photocopied the white paper, and then ran off copies, scanned it, and then ran off copies. So now I'm just painting in all the little pink dots. After I get done doing this, I will also scan this so that when I want to use pink dot stuff, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. So I did pink, yellow, there are the, the little black fly specks that didn't go well on this one. They're big blobby ones. I did manage to dry it and I think I ripped it up for, for background paper because I didn't like the big blotches. All right, now we're going to do the yellow fly specky stuff, and that turned out much better. I watered down the ink a little bit, dried that, then moved on to, I think they are green. On my screen, they look green. Dry it with the dryer because, you know, I'm impatient. There's purple fly specky things. Went better the second time than it did the first time. Dry it. Now I'm going to take a gingham table, a uh, tea towel or cup towel, whatever you guys call it. And I decided that I don't like wrinkled paper for my book covers, so I'm ironing all the papers. I forgot and left my healing mat, self-healing mat on there, and you know it doesn't take heat very well. So I had to scrunch it up and get it off. All right, so I found some uh, chipboard that was brown on one side, white on the other, and I have enough to make all those little books. I did them in twos that are up there. Now I'm going to cut the white edge off of all of the stuff because when you photocopy, they always have the border. Even though I said no border, it, you know, it creates a border. So I'm going to glue these on. Now I didn't follow this method all the way. I figured out what I was doing was good but not good enough. So there's the beginnings of gluing. I need space in between each one of the little pieces of chipboard. So that's why I put the ruler in between. 
I'm going to figure out later this is a good system, but I need to tweak it a little bit. So I know I can get three across. And then I'm going to butt the other one up against that ruler. And I'm going to try to fill up that whole sheet of uh, paper. I am using art glitter glue. Just kind of pressing it down. So I have to mark an even amount in between each one of the little chipboards so that I have enough to wrap around the covers. So that'll make three books right there. And I'm going to trim off the excess. I do like that little metal six inch ruler. I think it's about a little over a quarter, half an inch in between. All right, so I used my, um, this little plastic tool that I bought on Amazon, Amazon, and I'm trimming off all the, all the corners of the books because corners do not need bulk and extra paper on the corners gives you too much bulk. It makes it hard for the corners to look nice. So I glued the pink paper on the front and I'm using a paintbrush with the glue. I've tucked in the corners with the bone folder because I don't want too much bulk there so I kind of tuck it in a little bit so the corners look nice. Press down on it, pull it towards me, use the bone folder, smooth it out and I end up doing almost every one of them the same way like that. And again, I'm using art glitter glue. I do have PVA, but this was easy for me to reach, so that's what I went with. Actually, for me, one's about the same as the other. So I did all those little covers. Now I'm trying to get paper that matches the um, outside color dots, like pink dots with pink paper, blue dots with blue paper. So that's what I'm doing is cutting up the paper into um, strips. Then I will make the measurements so that I know how long the strips need to be to make a signature. Fold, you know, and they're folded in half. There we go. So I did two or three sheets of paper at a time, and I think they were three and a half inches across and then folded in half. I can't remember. There are four pieces of dyed paper in each signature, and most of the books have four signatures in them. I wanted to make them affordable. Some of the books that are featured at the end of the video do have um, a different kind of paper in them. Some of them have mixed media paper, Canson mixed media paper in them. So there'll be less folded paper in them, but maybe more signatures because they just get a little too fat. I fold all the signatures together so that the creep is not as bad and they seem to fit together nicely when you fold them all together at once. So to keep make sure I have everything together, I take the signatures and then I just rubber band them to show myself that I finished a book. the tail end. I don't, I can't remember if I showed pictures of me cutting up the colored uh, dyed paper for these books, but I did color coordination, so I did blue dyed paper with the blue books, pink paper for the pink books, green, uh, this one's, this one's tea dyed because I didn't have any green dyes. This one is orange for the orange dots. Uh, let's see, I still have some other colors that I need to get some yellow paper. I have no yellow paper. And then I need to dye some actual purple. Oh, that's a yellow. Um, dye actual purple paper. So I'm still, still headed towards the end goal of getting these into the Etsy store as quickly as I can. Right now, uh, let's see, if I got all the holes there are no... Oh, here they are. Where, why isn't it? Oh, all right, so I already... You, I already put holes in these. I used this, and then I took a two and a half inch piece of paper. I folded it in half. 
I marked an arrow where I wanted to put the circles, lined it up, clipped it like this on each end, made the black mark of a cross right there so I could know how to see it inside this little teeny hole here. I wanted to be able to see like the bullseye, the cross where it meets, to put the holes there. So then I would poke one hole, take a look at it, pull it off, pull, and it was a beast getting this thing undone from the uh, chipboard. I didn't do the, the papers in there because I've already uh, poked the holes in the paper. So I just did it with the two pieces of chipboard together. So then I did three of those that way and all my holes Let's see, can you see? Yeah, the holes are already poked in there. And then, then I took another piece. I threw away the one where the holes were poked in it because it's useless. Then I took another sheet of paper and I cut them on the paper cutter to make sure they were all the same size, two and a half inches in length. Then I folded it in half, folded it in half, and then folded it again. And that's how I came up with the center and the two ends. Laid them down. Um, oops. Laid them down in here in my, uh, I don't know, cradle, 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 that's it. Put it in here, drop these in, took my paper piercer, poke the holes, everything lines up, and now I'm about to sew the books together. So that will be the next part. Um, I'm not going to show it because my husband just left the house to go run an errand. And I know the minute I start talking more than this, the phone either is going to ring or a dog's going to bark or my husband's going to um, turn around and come back home and say forgot his cell phone or forgot something. So <laughs> I try to foolproof stuff, but honestly, the, my best intentions always get messed up. All right, so I am going to say this part at least. I chose the dark blue waxed linen to do with the book. I have a teal color blue, but I just didn't think that really went well with this shade of blue. Although on camera, it looks teal, like teal circles, but they're light blue. And this is kind of a tealy blue. And then I tried, I looked at the gray and I thought, nee, no, because I want you to be able to see the nice dark blue against the blue paper. So I decided on this. So I have to sew three of these together and then I'll move on to a different color. I still, as you'll see my desk, um, I still have paper I need to cut for these and holes. This is, this is my way of showing myself that the book is finished on the front and the inside. And then what I have to do is the paperwork, which is measuring the pay, uh, these, this is a three, either a three and a half by three and a half or a three by three. So then I measure a scrap of white paper out of my paper bin and run it down here, cut it off to make sure it's the same size as the book. And then I look for colored paper or it'll be tea dyed paper, it could be white sulfite paper. And I fold it up so I can decide how many holes I wanna put in it. I think I have one, do I have it here? Let me look and see. I think I, well, I thought I did. Poked holes in one of these earlier. No, guess not. I thought I had already poked holes in one of these, but I haven't. Is it this one? Uh, you know what? This one is, I prepped this one. This is the same. Well, this is a four by four. I did poke the holes in it. So here's how I did it. I folded the paper and I measured the paper so it's the same length as this. Then I, um, folded it in half and fold it again and fold again because I wanted five holes because this is a larger book than these little bitty ones that I only did three holes for. So here is my piece that I used to do the um, holes in the book. And I went ahead and clipped this on here to remind myself that that is on to, that it's done. I need reminders because I forget stuff. And I did the little bitty one the same way. I paper clipped this on here. There's holes poked, three holes here. And then I clipped this on here because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the little black X's in here. And then when I get paper to put in here, I'll unfold this and then I will poke my holes in the middle in the cradle. 
So I've got 16, 18, 20 books to work on, and they're in different different phases of being finished. Um, I have this one, which is the ex is is like the other one here. There's no holes in it. I did I got the insides glued today and dry. This one is a um, how large is this one? Oh, here it is, right here. Let's try this. This one's a four. It should be a four by four or four and a quarter. Oh, I did it at four and a quarter by four and a quarter so I can make my paper four by four. All right. Um, so this one is just clipped together. I have the inside done. I use scrapbook paper, leftover scrapbook paper, because I didn't want to make it so crazy. I mean, the outside's crazy enough, but I didn't want the inside to look, drive people's eyes crazy. So I went with something with a little, something a little more subtle, just the little polka dots. That is scrapbook paper. And then the next thing is I'll have to measure me a four and a half strip, inch strip of paper, and then I've got to find paper to put in this. So these are all in various stages of trying to put them together. I'll put it this way so I can remind myself the inside's done. So these are all in different stages. You know, I'm I'm working on them as I can. I'm watching TV and I'm working on them at the same time. There is there's my in stage stuff so I can remember what's next. This is completely I got nothing on this. And then this little guy is halfway or a third of a way finished. What else have I got up here? Oh, I've got another one that is looking for insides. This is the drawing that I did, and I photocopied it and copied it twice so I could have a piece of paper on the front and the back that matched like I did the other ones. But I'm still looking for inside paper for this. I can't decide what to do. So I clip it together, showing me that this needs to be finished. And then I worked on poking holes and getting paper and the ones that I have papers in. I went ahead and poked the holes and I'm getting ready to start sewing some of these so that I can get them off my desk and then I'll concentrate on this other section. So it's done bite by bite. Okay, I think that's it. When I finish sewing, well actually what I might do is I'll fast forward and do it with no no sound or maybe a voiceover because I'm watching TV while I sew because I, I, I like the noise. Um, but you're not going to want to listen to what I'm watching. <laughs> so I'm just, just going to make it go quiet. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. The books, a whole bunch of new little Coptic stitch books that are under $15 are in my Etsy store. I will put the link down below in the description box so that you can go over and take a look. So I appreciate you watching. See you in the next video. Bye.